Sadly, I also lost an investment in a company that I believed was developing a breakthrough concussion drug I thought would help others. And I'm sure you'll understand why it's too late for me because I've recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's former Packers legend Brett Favre on Capitol Hill today sharing that he has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So Favre was speaking to the House Ways and Means Committee. It's investigating allegations the Hall of Famer improperly funneled public money to his alma mater, the University of Southern Mississippi. Our Ashley Washburn joins us live now here in studio with more on the Packers Hall of Famer's stunning announcement. Ashley. Yeah, hi, Susan and Steve. It was during his opening statement today that Brett Favre revealed his Parkinson's diagnosis before Congress. He was there to testify about his potential misuse of taxpayer money where he allegedly used state funds that were intended for families in need and instead donated millions to both his alma mater and Provocus, a former company that he told Congress today was developing a breakthrough concussion drug. And while he added that it's too late for him because of his diagnosis, it's a cause that's still near and dear to his heart. Favre spent 20 years years in the NFL and of course a majority of that time with the Green Bay Packers. He still holds the record for most consecutive games played in the NFL at 299. But since retiring in 2010, he's been very vocal about the danger surrounding concussions. He was asked in an interview on NBC's Today Show in 2018 about how many times he thinks he had one during his 20 year career. Here's what he had to say that I know of uh, three, four, maybe. Mm -hmm. But as we are learning about concussions, there's a term that is often used uh, in football and, and maybe in other sports that I got deemed. And as Dr. Amal he was saying that uh, the times that he's been deemed in the NFL has actually been somewhere between 100 and a couple thousand. So even though he's had a concussion about three or four times medically in the NFL, he's been deemed a lot more times than that. And the concussion protocol that we see in the NFL today didn't actually start until after Favre was retired. It was developed in 2011 by the head, neck and spine committee, which is a board of independent and NFL affiliated physicians and scientists and includes advisors from the NFL PA. That is a protocol that is now reviewed every year to ensure players are receiving care that is up to date. Susan and Steve. Ashley, thanks for breaking that down for us. With Favre's announcement today, we want to learn more about Parkinson's and any possible connection to the head injuries we see so much in sports these and days. And so joining us live this afternoon is Daisy Reimer with the Wisconsin Parkinson's Association. And Daisy, appreciate your time and expertise with us today. You are also a nurse practitioner, and in your experience, when you learned about what Brett Favre said today about his Parkinson's diagnosis, what were your first thoughts surprise of course and empathy and support uh, for him and his in his Parkinson's journey um, you know we do know that there is research out there on head injuries uh, there was actually a study that was released last year August of 2023 uh, through the Journal of American Medical Association and that was a study on football players uh, and men in, in uh, long-term sports. Now, how, much, how many head injuries you've had uh, in high school and then college age and then through the uh, pro field. And what it really showed was that um, especially football players had 88.9% higher rate of Parkinson's or Parkinsonism um, than the general public. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty strong statistic. I was reading an interview this morning with uh, Jim McMahon, quarterback for the Bears, and did some time with the Packers as well. Uh, he's dealing with similar mm -hmm. issues, maybe not Parkinson's specifically, but he has been so vocal that we need to do more right. to protect people in his position, <laughs> a quarterback in, in professional sports. How do we continue to enjoy the game we love while not subjecting these people to something that is going to Right. harm their life for decades. Yeah, I think that that's obviously through research as we know more. Um, you know, back when they all started, even Brett Favre started his career, they didn't have the knowledge. And so you didn't have, um, you know, the support that you need as far as uh, head, headgear and protection and things like that. And we're so much more knowledgeable nowadays that we can uh, put rules in place for young children in, that are playing and then through high school and uh, through the pros. So I think that the more we know, uh, the more uh, we protect the players, and that's the key importance. And what kind of awareness or perhaps information does someone like Brett Favre, when he comes out and says that he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's, what does that do for the cause and the push to get uh, more help done? Sure. 
Well, uh, obviously, we don't have enough information. There's always more research that needs to be done. There are many organizations that support that. Michael J. Fox Foundation tends to support a lot of the research component. Here in Wisconsin, we have the Wisconsin Parkinson Association. So uh, if people are uh, just diagnosed, that first year is really tough. I mean, where do you go? Uh, you don't want to own the disease. You want it to be a part of your life, but not your life. So a lot of, of support is needed and exercise programs and things like that mm -hmm. that um, help people live well with Parkinson's. Last 30 seconds or so, what will Parkinson's look like for someone Brett Favre's age? We saw it in Michael J. Fox. It took hold of him real quickly. Mm -hmm. What will it look like for Actually, for Michael Favre? J. Fox has had it for quite a while, and uh, the younger people have it, more younger onset. Uh, it tends to be uh, that it's a slower progression. So we don't know, you know, we don't have that crystal ball to really know, but he's obviously very athletic and part of the key with Parkinson's is exercise. So, um, and I'm sure he has a great team that's in his corner. All right, Daisy Reimer, Director of Medical Advising and Education with Wisconsin Parkinson Association. Thanks so much. For Thanks for coming in.